Hi guys, this is Jiggy, a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines and welcome to my channel. So this episode will be a little bit different from the usual, the usual videos that you've seen from me. What we're gonna try to do, <laughs> sorry my friend, it's all right. So this is gonna be as casual as can be. Now AR is here, AR is a friend, um, he's actually a uh, well, you call yourself a hobbyist photographer, right? Back in the day. Yeah. Back in the day. And uh, he was asking me about our trip because he was planning to do one with his wife next year, correct? Yep. And I invited him over so that I could show him some pictures and basically a few videos that we took. Yep. Then when we got here, we decided, hey, why not record a video? So what we're doing, this is what we're doing now so that I can share with everyone basically a beginner's guide to going to Abisko, to seeing the Northern Lights and what to do and how to do it. And to take good pictures also on the side, correct? Yeah. Earlier, All right. We went to Gothenburg to shoot a wedding for a friend. And from Gothenburg, we took a plane to a, to a town called Kiruna. Okay? From Kiruna, you're supposed to either go to Abisko, because Abisko is uh, 100 kilometers away from, from Kiruna. Okay? And it is a national park. All right. So the nice thing about a national park is that there's no one there. Mm -hmm. So the no worst thing, there. yeah, and from what I understand with the Northern Lights from, from my friends teaching me, yeah. is that the best way to see the Northern Lights is if you don't have the light, light pollution coming from the city. Yeah, that's so right. you have to be as far away as you can from the city. Yeah. So by being in Abisko, Abisko, it's called Abisko SDF Turistation. So it is really, it's a, it's a resort within the national park. Oh, all right. All right. So we were hoping that um, we would be able to see the Northern Lights right out of our cottage. This is how the cottage looks. This is how wow. the view looks like from the cottage. Wow. And that's a cottage. Right? That's a cottage. That's so, huge. It's a nice place. It's really a nice place. This is one of our first pictures when we arrived. Okay. Look at that blue sky. And so, wow. So this is how the place looks like. All right. So. What were the things that we, that we brought during the trip? There. So I had a flash, yeah, the RX100. That's, that's a nice photo. Then here you go, the F60, F60RM from Sony, mm -hmm. the 51.4, the other lenses here, and the A7R Mark IV. And that's a tripod that we used here. That's a Gitso carbon fiber tripod. The first thing that you have to do when you get there is make sure you go location hunting in the morning. Yeah, when you can see everything. When you can see everything. Yeah. So when we were walking around, I had this one, mm -hmm. uh, the F60RM. This is F45. That F60RM is under repair now because I destroyed it in Paris. It <laughs> fell. So I had to use this one, the MagMod MagRing right. on this one, just so that I could mount my F60RM here. So that's why you'll see in the BTS photos, I would still be using this, even though I didn't have a modifier installed. All right. Normally, you could just install it Yep, straight. this way, straight. Yeah. Okay, but the only reason why I didn't do that is because I broke the hot shoe when it fell. Oh. Okay. So I had to I had to mount it on the mag ring uh -huh. here. And this how way. Do you, how do you trigger that? Uh, it's triggered using. It's over there. Can you pass that? Oh. That one. It's triggered using. This one. Oh. All right. This is a Sony remote command. So this is mounted on top of your camera. And then this is the light stand that I had the entire time. Look at how light it is. That's a Photix Padat Carbon 200. Wow, that's light. It's light and it fits in, it fits in, your, in your luggage. Yeah. Though, yeah, even in a backpack. Even in your backpack and, and very, very light to bring around. Because okay. the most important thing, especially with, when, when you're doing things like that, mm -hmm. is that it has to be light and portable. So it works reliable. this way. And reliable. So this one mounts here. Right? Mm -hmm. And that's basically the light we had all the time. Plus... Just this one? Just that one and maybe a dome yeah. diffuser and a, and a grid. Since we were basically doing ocular, we decided to do a, a shoot here. Like, I would shoot myself like this one. Might as well take advantage of the view. Wow, so I had, a nice. I had a flash coming from the right side. And this, this is one. raw. This is, that's raw, that's, right? raw. that's yeah. raw. This one mounted on this one. My assistant photographer was shooting this. And then, of course, when my wife came out, we had to do a shoot too. Yeah. Right? Of course, you got to take pictures with yes. the wife all the time. Yeah. If you have the opportunity to have great pictures taken with your wife, always take that opportunity. So when you go to Abisko, maybe you can bring me along. 
We'll, right. We can talk about that. We can talk about you that. You can bring me along. I can so. buy you microwave food again. <laughs> so this yeah. is this is basically how we're doing it. Then we would find locations like this. So how beautiful that location wow. is, right? And we just it's so picturesque. Wow. This was shot, I think, with a 51.4 A7 R Mark IV. Yeah, that stack chart. Yep. Now look at this. See, here's my assistant. So that's, yeah, that, that's a BTS. That's, that's basically this one. Just this one. Um, doing some light tests for, for this particular image. Yeah. That's the output. But of course, I would have this one removed mm -hmm. in post-production. Mm -hmm. So this was on the way down to what they were saying was the best location for the Northern Lights, which is down by the lake. Because there's no civilization near you. None. No light so leak no whatsoever. Light, yeah, no, no light, no light, light exactly. with, It's about a kilometer down from our cottage, which so is a it, relatively easy walk. Was it safe? I mean, it was. It safe? was. It okay. was. Every everything's safe in Sweden for some reason. Oh, you Guys, from the reindeer. We, yeah. No, there we didn't see any reindeer. Okay. Here. <laughs> Guys, uh, for those wanting to see the Northern Lights, I'm sure there's a, there's a lot of tours there. A, a very good friend of mine is actually doing one of the tours in Norway, or in Iceland. They're fantastic, but one thing that I loved with what we did is that we decided not to take a tour. Yeah, so the fact that we didn't take a tour gave us so much time to be able to, to just explore. explore, feel the place, and there was no one with us. Mm. Because if you go with a tour, you won't be able to go to places where you want to go yep. and be alone. Yep. You would be brought to the best places, mm -hmm. but not necessarily alone. Yes, and then you'd have time to just whip out your phone and take, and a, take picture, a picture. But no, not but of like course, this, like, yeah. yeah. Let, let's, for example, yeah. But uh, if I were to go on a tour, they would have told me the best location would have been down by the lake, mm. because photography-wise, with the northern lights and the lake, you'd get reflection. Yes. So that would make it more that magnificent, right? Oh, yeah. But my point was not to shoot the northern lights. The point of the trip was to shoot myself and my wife with the Northern Lights. So the hero so that's was different. us. Yeah, that's yes, different. That's right? different. That's, a, that's yeah, different that's that's as compared to going on a photography tour that mm. you're going to be there to shoot the Northern Lights yeah. because the Northern Lights will be then your hero that's for your right. photo. That's right. So the entire trip will revolve around getting the best possible photo of the Northern Lights. All right. All right? Yep. But with this one, this trip that we took was to get the best possible photos for me and my wife. With? The with northern. the northern lights if we sense. didn't see the northern lights then it's okay we didn't see it but we were given an opportunity to shoot in an amazing place like abisco mm -hmm. right yeah that's so, actually a very very good um way it's of putting yeah it, right? because so, you gotta you gotta figure out how you want to do it so that makes that's really what the you know the biggest difference between um a portrait photographer yes from a landscape that's, photographer yes, is yes. when when you prioritize the landscape and then you put people in, it then, doesn't normally come out to be very, very nice. Exactly. Okay. No, no, no. It comes out nice. It could. But yeah. the focus will always be That's on the, the landscape. Thing. So I really always have a hard time. Okay. You know, putting subjects in place because I did not plan for that as okay. you know as, as a portrait. Okay. But more of you know just taking. Yeah. So to, to give you that the, with that mindset now. You will see how we are approaching most of the pictures. Okay, all right. So yeah. we are looking for places where we can position ourselves mm -hmm. and still have the, the the northern lights as a backdrop. Okay. Okay. So, so this is one of the locations that we pinpointed, you know. But in the end, we didn't use it. So I would love to go back. We should be shooting there. You didn't use it. No, we didn't use it because we got so excited. So again, this is another shot with the light coming here from the left side and having the mountains as a backdrop. So. We started going down this path, and when we saw this path, the light was about the, the light was setting already mm -hmm. during the time that we we took our time mm -hmm. to, to actually go around. And one of the things I want to show you this picture, because one of the things that I would always teach is that I always have my light with me, mm -hmm. right? But the question would be, should you still use your artificial light, your flash, if ambient light is good enough? Well, yes, uh, that's a very good question if you know what good ambient light is. Yes, see, that's, that, that's the whole point. Exactly. So if you've already got perfect ambient light, All right. no need to put flash, okay. such as this photo. I've, yeah. I've been showing you pictures now dramatic. with flash, but this one we use existing ambient light and we didn't see any need mm. to put any more flash. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. and this one in itself is already for me a very good photo. You even have a lens flare there. Yeah, yeah. all those things, which actually it shouldn't really be happening with a with amazing Sony lenses. It's very difficult to get lens flare. Look at that. Oh, really? Okay. With the with the Sony lenses, with yeah. the G Masters, very very difficult because it controls the flare. Oh. Okay. That's how good the lenses are. All right. 
Look at that. Look at that. Wow. I'm shooting directly towards the sun and where's the yeah, lens. Yeah, you don't see yeah. it. Exactly. exactly. Wow. That's, that's, why, that's how good the lenses are. All right. Okay. So now, we got to this point, this ravine, and with, wow. with water. Look that's at that. really nice. Look at that. So we already knew, I was talking to my wife, we already knew this was the place we wanted to shoot the Northern Lights, mm -hmm. right? This area. So we kept on walking, just taking pictures of the place and look at the view. Mm -hmm. Then, the moment we got to the lake, right? The lake was nice. Mm -hmm. But what else can you see with the lake? It's just water. Yes. Right? So, so it didn't really interest me as a point of reference for me to true. shoot. It's rather right? plain. It is, but if you see the northern lights in this area, it would reflect here because that would be placid water towards the evening. Where it do would you look put the people exactly, and where do you put the light? And where do you put the light? So yeah. those are the things that I would be thinking of before I even shoot. The nice thing about that walk is we were able to see wow, this. Oh, that's nice. So again, when talking about light. Mm. You always have to see your prevailing ambient light first before you put any artificial light, correct? Yeah, that makes sense. So, when I saw this area here, the prevailing ambient light here gave this amazing orange glow. That's right. But it, I would use the sun as a backlight, mm -hmm. meaning just a rim light. And this is the scene, basically us trying to get into and putting the light already in place and getting our position here. Mm -hmm. So what we did here with this light is we underexposed it to control the highlights. Yes. And we added a flash in front just to balance, to balance it out. And this was the output. Mm. Right? And I was shooting at, a, at F22 just mm. to be able to get the starburst. To get everything, yes. yeah. All right? But this one, we were so happy with this one already. When we saw it, we were like, wow, it's such a beautiful photo. We love it. Because we're not used to seeing a, an environment like this. Yes. We're not. So everything is new. So we look at it with fresh eyes. That's, when you see something for the first time, it just blows your mind and you don't know where to shoot. Yeah, exactly. exactly. You get overwhelmed. You get overwhelmed. So the, the most important thing to do is actually sit down and take in the place. That is something you cannot do if you're in a tour. Definitely. Right? Yeah. You cannot. You can't sit down and just say, wow, this is beautiful. Spend a few minutes there mm. just thinking about it. No one's beside you. No one's really, mm -hmm. no one's really bothering you. And by doing that, we were actually able to find this location. Look at that. Mm. We waited for a few more moments. The sun was setting. Yeah. So it hit behind the mountains and it gave a better, a better glow. Yeah. Orange spread across. Air, orange spread across, well. but yeah. then you've got that contrast since it was backlit. Yeah. Then you underexpose, then you add the light in front. So the light, this is the exact setup here. Except that this was the F60 RM. Here you go, there. What's the usual power if, you know? Well, with this where one... Where do I start for, for a um, Well, it depends. If you already see that you're shooting in high-speed sync and you're already at 1 over 4,000, 5,000, always just start at full power. Full power, yep. Because you're especially, too fast, yeah, yeah, especially with an F60 RM, it's not really that powerful. It's just about 60 watts. Okay. So um, full power is always a good place to start. Okay. Afterwards, you just dial it just down. Just, uh, yeah. I've, but I've never really shot below one fourth, broad daylight or sunset, hardly, especially in high speed sync. And look at this. So we weren't we weren't content with this one. We decided to do That's another really one. That's nice. Wife looks beautiful, right? Yeah. Yeah. And the sunset a little bit more now, so it, it gave a more dreamy tone. It's a tone. very nice filler. But look at this one. Wow, that's nice. Look at that, my personal portrait. No, the wife looks better. No, 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 I look better. <laughs> <laughs> no, but see, from this, from this moment, we already knew where we were going to shoot. So after that, we were able to do one more layout. Look at mm. this one. So it, oh, by the way, everything that was shot here was by my assistant photographer. Her name's RP, and she was the one with us while we were shooting a wedding, so we decided to take her with us to Abisco. So, For that specific reason. Yeah, so now, the, <laughs> no, yeah, but here's the question now, the biggest question. Yeah. If I am the one that chooses the location, yes. fixes the pose, lights it, but my assistant shoots it, yep. whose photo is it? It's hers. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so none of these are my photos. No, <laughs> no but press it. you see, that's a point of contention. If you have some comments regarding that particular statement, I'd love to hear your thoughts and mm -hmm. please leave a comment below. And let's see, because my personal opinion, it's never going to be your photo unless you've thought of everything. Exactly. Meaning if it was your location, your light, your post, mm -hmm. and you clicked it. 
Yep. But then just by merely clicking it and not having all those three, not doing all those three, it's still not your photo. It could be a collaboration. Yep. But I'm sure RP wouldn't mind by if I say that, you know, it's like 75% me, 25% her. Mm -hmm. Because she did click us. Well, so, I mean, if you And follow, I didn't put it on a tripod, so it was her composition. But, well, but if you follow someone's recipe, then that, mis that doesn't make you a chef. Yes, you but, know, uh, I mean, but of course you could do it better. But then, yeah. but if, if that chef is beside you, basically putting all the ingredients, yeah, no, and you're no. just stirring the soup, that makes sense. Yes. So it, it but of course, our piece of fantastic photography, fantastic, oh, yeah. fantastic, I, I, I of saw course. Our shots. Yeah, fantastic. I've seen her work, yes, yeah. fantastic. But yeah. of course. I want to take a little bit of credit for all these photos, right? Because <laughs> no, so we're talking about me, it in show, my vlog. Show me more photos. Okay, we'll show you so, more. Yeah. Okay. So here one, of course, the, the wife always has to be the star. Mm -hmm. Always, mm -hmm. right? We, we got back to the cottage now, and then okay. we waited. Uh, Afterwards, we did our location hunting. Yeah. Then you take out your phone. You okay. go to the Aurora app. Your phone? Yes, okay. because there's an app. Ah, okay. The Aurora app right. will basically tell you where the Aurora is at that moment. What KP it is, I don't even understand what the KP, but I know the higher the number, the more, the bigger the Aurora is. All right. But you would see it in the app. Okay. You would see it in the Aurora app, but the green gets bigger. So that means the Aurora, the Borealis is getting bigger. Mm -hmm. And it pinpoints where you are. All so right. you would see now where its you... movement towards you. Oh, okay. So okay. the moment that, that the green is over your pin, that means the Aurora is there. Is it? Okay. So when we were getting ready, I was looking at my app and I was like, Babe, it's right there. I was shouting from inside and I ran outside. When I ran outside, I could see it literally you could from our cottage. You saw it. Okay. I, I saw the line coming out. Okay. So when they went out, this was the very first picture that we took. Set up the tripod. Oh, this is our car. <laughs> of course, with the car. It was just there. This is our cottage, 202. Yeah. And the northern lights was just there. Okay. This was a video, the only video I was able to take that mm. night of the northern lights. Look how beautiful the video is. Okay, we actually just saw the northern light, it's there. That's nice. <laughs> Look at that. It's pitch, it's right. pitch black. That's basically how it looked. Oh, okay, it's so you don't black. see it. No, you don't. No, no, we, the, the phone it, couldn't see it. It was, it was oh. really dark, but the moment your eyes adjusted, our eyes are always better than the lens. So the moment, that's why we have to get away from light, from light pollution, because mm. the moment our eyes adjust, we're okay. You can see we it. We can see it. It okay. was beautiful. So right. we took that, we took the picture of the Northern Lights, then we immediately ran to wow. the location, right? We, I told you this was the location that we were supposed to shoot. Yes. So the technique that we did, well, normally the landscapers would tell you, you've got to lock to a point, point of infinity and keep it on manual focus because Wait, it's going to be so Say dark. Okay. Say that again. So your lenses will yeah. have a, well, you have to lock your lenses to a specific object. That's right. Then switch it to manual focus. Oh, okay. And then go to the location where you're shooting because it's going to be pitch black and you won't be able that's to focus right. on the infinity. Because it's going to be confused. And that's that's a landscaper's technique. But I'm a portrait photographer. So how do you mix that? My, my point was that at, I, I felt that even at 2.8, a wide, a wide angle lens would not bokeh the background so long as the foreground in focus is not too close, too close to the lens. Yes, that makes sense. Right. So if I'm a bit, if I'm about three feet or four feet away from the lens, we're all good. Everything's going to be sharp, right? Mm -hmm. But again, the northern lights were not my primary when I was shooting. My primary was myself. Yes. So what I would do, what we would do, is the moment we get into position, we'd turn on our lights and focus on our face, lock our focus, then get rid of the light. Because you, as a portrait photographer, again, I, you are the, the, you know, I am the, we want the, the subjects to be the, the focal point of the image. And then I put in an artificial light. Mm -hmm. You know how? We would do this. Okay, one, two, three. We would light our subjects. Just to lock? No, not even. Okay. So we've locked our exposure already, the tripod set. All right. Okay. Then so why do you do that? Just to be able to light us up uh, and separate us from the background. Okay. So when you look at the images now, yeah. you would see that there's light on us. There's so much more light. There's so much more oh. light on us, but at the same time, we're still maintaining the exposure around us. Yeah. Plus the exposure of the northern lights. 
And then the succeeding images, what I did was I boosted up my ISO to 3200, okay. so I could bring down my shutter speed to one second, yes. which would now be easier for us to hold the pose. Now, remember I was telling you that the lake was, uh, was supposedly where everyone wants to shoot. This one would have looked amazing with the peak of the northern light, the aurora. Mm. It would have given that reflection here. So this was the final image that we took because again, the lake was the farthest away. Basically, that's it. That is, that is our entire trip. The things that we learned really is that you have to ask yourself first what your focus is. Are you a portrait photographer, a landscape photographer? Are you shooting the aurora to shoot the aurora? Or are you shooting it as a background for you mm -hmm. to document your experience? That's right. Okay. So I hope this this conversation helped you and maybe yeah, enlighten you on how to oh, no, a lot, a lot. Okay. And you you know, you put their really important perspectives. All right. So I hope you guys enjoy that. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment below and I would or if you have any suggestions on mm -hmm. what AR should be doing, something that I missed. Again, this was our my first time shooting the Northern Lights and I was just so happy. All these things that I learned, I hope I was able to share with you. Yes. I hope you guys enjoyed this relatively, I think, very, very long video. And I hope I didn't bore you guys. But again, thank you very much for watching. Until yeah. the next video.